Maybe you've already seen our Fury cosplay, but we also had the honor to bring death to life. Sounds funny, I know, but of course I'm talking about one of the four horsemen from the game Darksiders. Death is the main character in Darksiders 2, but we will also see him in Darksiders 3. Death has some really cool armors in the game and we were free to choose our favorite one. So after some research we found the crow armor and we really liked the design and decided to build this one. So, But what we didn't know was that you get the crow armor very lately in the game. So I first had to finish Darksiders 2 to get good references, but I mean it could be worse. The design of this armor is just so beautiful and I really love the color scheme and we also chose this armor because we wanted to have something that fits to uh, my Fury cosplay. The pictures and the videos we took from the game were just the perfect references and uh, we could see all the details and how the armor moves. This is just, just perfect. For such a giant project you need to think about all the materials you're gonna need and you also have to think about which material you're gonna use for which part of the costume. We tried out new techniques like making a life cast of Ralph, which we need to sculpt a death's upper body. We did some molding and casting, Ralph did a lot of 3D modeling and yeah, printing and painting all the armor parts is also a lot of work. Well this was a really huge project and we worked about 6 weeks on it. We started with the life cast of my upper body and uh, well, first I thought it would be fun but believe me, it's not. Actually the plan was to use my real body for the costume but when we realized that I had to wear the costume on several conventions and we had to do the makeup and the body painting and the prosthetics every morning before the convention it just would take too much time so we decided to make a silicon body. We used a skin-friendly brush on silicone, which is specially made for life casts. We brushed on several layers on Ralph's upper body. And yes, it not only looks funny, it actually was a lot of fun. For me and my helper. But then came the not-so-funny part for Ralph. We had to make a hard shell out of plaster bandages to keep the silicone mold in shape. Yeah, this process takes a while and trust me, it feels very uncomfortable. After an hour or so we could remove the plaster shell and I finally could cut open the mold and of course very carefully. In total this whole process took us about over 3 hours. To get a lightweight and stable body cast I used epoxy resin and I also added some fiberglass mats. I was so excited because I love sculpting and I never had the chance to sculpt such a gigantic piece. I always use all base clay and luckily I always have a lot of this stuff in my workshop. For the whole body I used more than 20 kilo of clay. The sculpting process took me about two weeks. Um, on some days I only sculpted for one or two hours but there were also these days where I sculpted 10 hours. It was really a lot of work to find the right shapes because that has very strange body proportions. I had the most fun with the detail work, like the splinters on the chest or the shoulder mark. A very time consuming part was adding all the wrinkles and the skin texture. For me it was the first time sculpting a piece which needed to look as realistic as possible. So I tried out a lot of different techniques and uh, yeah, it took some time until I was happy with the result and yeah I can say I'm very proud of the finished sculpt. Next it was time for the mold. And since the final piece will be made out of silicone, the mold had to be solid. So we used a brushable urethane plastic and epoxy resin and carefully brushed it on. The only bad thing was we had to work very very fast because the resin cures super fast and we wanted to catch every little detail of the sculpt. 
To get more stability, we added several layers of epoxy resin and fiberglass. And of course, we had to repeat the whole process on the back side. We let the mold cure for one day and then came the tricky part. Crack open this monster. Popsicle sticks are the best helper to crack a solid mold open. When the mold finally opened up, it destroyed the clay scalp, but it wasn't too bad because we didn't need it anymore. That has a strange undead-like skin tone, um, but I mean, he's dead, so that's okay, I guess. I did a lot of tests and mixed blue and gray and black and purple and white until I was happy with the color. For the silicone body, I used a very, very soft silicone, which is specially made for prosthetics. To make sure that the silicone suit um, stays in shape, especially these big muscles, we added uh, some foam. For that I placed the body cast into the mold and added um, silicone foam to the muscle parts, which needed to be filled up. I did this with both halves of the mold and before putting both halves together I added uh, silicone to the edges and then we just pressed the halves together with a lot of screws and just let the silicone cure overnight. I was so happy that everything worked out so well. Uh, of course I had to patch up some spots, especially uh, the seam line, but that was not too bad. And then it was finally time for my most favorite part. I mixed up different silicone pigments and colors and added shades and highlights to the body. <sighs> I'm so proud how this turned out. Since we knew that there was a death mask in the collector's edition of Darksiders 2, we checked the internet and found a brand new collector's edition on eBay. And uh, at first we were a little bit skeptical about the quality of the mask, but when it arrived, I mean, we were really amazed by the quality and uh, normally we would prefer to build everything by our own, but in this case, why not using it and saving time and money? But of course we had to make several adjustments. So we molded the mask and made a holocast out of lightweight resin. Des have those glowing orange eyes, so I added UV lights to the mask, which lights up the UV contact lenses. I only used the glowing eyes effect for just a few seconds or a few minutes when I'm on stage or for photos. Uh, for that I added the switch, which I can uh, turn on and off with my mouse. Blah, blah, blah. Laura gave the mask the final touch with her amazing painting skills. I also added a lot of tiny holes, which makes it easier to breathe. The mask together with the glowing eyes effect was just so cool. The people were so scared at the convention, it was a lot of fun. Most of the armor parts were 3D modeled, which is always Ralph's job. To save some time, we asked THQ Nordic for the 3D models. But mostly the 3D models in the game are low poly models with textures and has no details. So Ralph spent a lot of time smoothing everything out, remodeling some parts and adding all the details. He modeled the shoulder, the bracer, the front part of the bell and the claws and also the boot armor. Another is that a few months ago we made a 3D body scan of Ralph, which now makes it so much easier to fit all the 3D models directly to his body. It was really hard to find the right scaling since everything needs to be super big, but still needed a good look on Ralph. Another very time-consuming step is to separate the 3D models for printing. I mean, you have to think about where to cut them apart, where you want to have the seams and also how to assemble and glue all parts together later.
Most people might not know that I'm actually a building engineer, but I don't want to say that you have to study to uh, separate a 3D model, obviously, but when it comes to 3D modeling or visual thinking, my technical skills are very helpful. Before you can actually start painting a 3D print, you first need to fill all the seams, sand the surface, spray on fillers, sand again, then more filler and so on. It can take weeks until you're done with that. And it is so satisfying to finally start with painting and weathering the parts you've been working on for the last weeks. A 3D printed armor can get very heavy, especially when you have these huge parts which we printed for death. To make some armor parts more comfy for Ralph, I made them out of foam. It is so easy to work with and you are so super fast. You just need to seal the surface on the foam and then you can already start painting it. The boots are the biggest part of the costume, they are so huge. I built the base of the boots with foam and glued some of Ralph's old shoes inside so he's actually just wearing some old chucks. <laughs> I covered the ugly foam with wedding, fake leather and fabric and the weathering makes the whole thing pretty authentic. They turned out so pretty and so huge. My Fury shoes are so tiny compared to them. The wig was more tricky than I thought. Uh, the main problem was to find a wig in the right color. Death has bluish black hair and I found this dark blue wig with black roots. Um, this was not right so I dyed the wig a bit darker with black and dark blue alcohol colors. And again Baka helped us with the styling. She's an amazing wig artist and I'm so happy she made the wigs for our Darksiders cosplays. The Darksiders cosplays were our biggest project in 2018 and we are so damn proud how they turned out. I have already won the Death cosplay at Gamescom, PAX West, Egomir and also at uh, Paris Games Week and I'm pretty sure there are more conventions coming in the future and even if uh, that it's the most uncomfortable costume I have worn I really love to wear it at a convention and scare and fascinate the people at the same time, it's really cool. 